Oh, and we're live. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Bondi Johnson. I am the founder and part owner of Roasted Coffee Company. Here we talk about all things business and coffee. So if you're new here, hope you enjoy. If you're returning, then welcome back. Today's video is going to be on a question I get pretty frequently and that is how to continue to grow a customer base. So I've talked about how to attract your first customer base, but then obviously you need to continue to retain those customers and grow new ones. And I think the question I get more so is customer retention because in the coffee business, think about all the different options people have for coffee, especially in the grocery stores. You have like everything from your Dunkin' Donuts to Starbucks to Maxwell House. Uh, that's a lot of competition, especially if you're gonna be a specialty coffee roaster, the price points are pretty different and not a lot of people understand that. So I think it's important that you're targeting the right market, but obviously once you have those people in mind and once you've started targeting those people, uh, how do you keep them? Because there are tons of other options out there, even within the specialty coffee realm. So uh, before I dive into that, please keep commenting down any sort of ideas or topics that you want me to cover. Just let me know because uh, it makes it a lot easier for me to just prioritize a list of videos to make. And you guys have given me a lot of good suggestions. So this was a, a question, I forget who it was from. I'll go ahead and throw something up here, Marcus. I'll tell you who it is. I appreciate that. It makes it easier for me to sit down and pull out a topic and talk about it. It. So I appreciate the support, 1,900 subscribers, which is awesome. I'm hoping to get to 2,000 soon and there will be a prize for somebody. So when you start your business, you usually, and this is the same in real estate as it is in pretty much any business. I learned it first in real estate when I started as an agent. You wanna work your what's called sphere of influence. And that is just gonna be friends, family, people you work with, people you went to school with. It doesn't even have to be people who are friends. Just people that know you, it's really easy to sell something to them if you have an existing relationship. And you need to make sure that you maximize that, right? I don't mean if mom and dad bought a bag of coffee, you're not done pulling all that you can out of that sphere of influence. You need to make sure that you're talking to uncles, aunts, cousins, getting referrals from them, getting referrals from your friends. And, and it might seem like you're annoying these people, but at the end of the day, you need to do it if you actually want to grow your customer base because a lot of people are going to be what we have deemed one-offs. And that is just somebody who purchases the coffee to try it. Maybe they're curious to see what specialty coffee is all about. They're curious to see what your coffee tastes like, what's different, but they don't really have the intention of continuing to buy your coffee. It's somebody who might actually not really care about what their coffee tastes like. They go for price. And so if you're pricing your coffee at, at almost double what some of these coffees are in a grocery store, there's really not a lot of room for you to be competing if that's where their mind's at. So you're going to get a lot of those one-time purchases that purchase and then don't come back. And we're not worried about those people, right? We're also not worried about people who don't want your coffee. Not everybody's going to want to buy your shit. You need people who want to actually buy your coffee. That's who we're after. You're trying to connect with people who want, as many people that you can who actually want to buy your product. So you're gonna have to go through a lot of people who don't, and that's just the name of the game. It's the nature of the business. So make sure that you're really leveraging those relationships you already have with your friends, with your family, with people that you work with. Call up an old friend that you haven't talked to in a while. Call up an old teacher that you might have had. You might have awkward conversations with people, but at the end of the day, you might have a great conversation with somebody who not only buys your coffee, but tells a bunch of other people to buy your coffee. So if you're not doing that, you need to do that. And it's not easy. That's the difficult part. And a lot of people don't like to do that. It's we, we don't do that as much as we should. I'll be the first person to say it. There's a lot more outreach we could do of picking up the phone and calling people in our community, but we do have a good, a good reach and we do have a, a good referral system that's really helped us. So the second thing for retention would be campaigns. This is going to be anything from promos to social media campaigns to email marketing campaigns, seasonal deals. This is just something that is going to keep people coming back when there's incentives, right? This is gonna be discounts. Those seasonal deals are gonna be, oh, it's Christmas, oh, it's Halloween, oh, it's it's Thanksgiving, right? People are gonna be incentivized to buy if there's a sale going on or a deal. Now, you don't wanna be one of those companies that's just 
constantly things are on sale for 20% or 25%. It kind of loses its appeal because it's just always a sale. Now, if you want to have a first time discount, that's something we do. I think that that's beneficial, but you don't want to be, be tossing out 20, 25% discounts all the time. Once you use these, you need to use them strategically so that you, you're trying to capture those who could be one-offs and turn them into repeat customers. And I, I've said this before, I don't know the exact statistic, but once somebody buys your product or, or your service, three times, they are like 99% likely to just continue using your product or service. And it's not exactly 99%, but from two purchases to three, it exponentially increases. The likelihood that they're going to continue using you, it exponentially increases. And that's super important and something that you can capture. You need to be aware of that. So we really like the email marketing campaigns. I think it's a chance, an opportunity for us to really be ourselves and show personality in an email while all the time leading to ultimately trying to get people to land on our website, right? It's a sales technique, but we also have full control and we've been building a database of customers as they've purchased. So it's a huge, it's a huge target, huge reach for us. And that's something that not a lot of people capitalize on. If you're using a Shopify, if you're using a Wix, any of those website or, or online store platforms should have the ability to capture emails so that you can build a database of people to send these emails to when you have new products, discounts, deals, like those seasonal deals, anything. And that leads me to my next point. You need to be constantly trying to update and add new products to your inventory so that people are staying interested and they're staying engaged. If you're one of those people who has new flavors coming out frequently and I like flavored coffees, well, I'm gonna check with your company. I'm gonna check back from time to time to see if you have a flavor coming out that's one I really like, right? Let's say I love cinnamon coffee. Well, if I know that you have new flavors coming out all the time, I'm gonna be watching to see if you launch a cinnamon coffee and then I'm gonna go buy it. But if you don't do anything like that, if you have the same set of products all the time and you're not ever adding anything to your lineup, well, I'm not really gonna pay attention because I don't think that there's ever the chance that you're gonna be offering something that I like. I already know what you have. And if I don't think that's changing, well then I don't care. I'm not gonna see something added that I'm gonna like because you're not adding anything. It might not have to be anything crazy like a new blend of coffee that has new origins or anything like that but just some flavors, adding new grind sizes, adding anything that you can add to an order or to your lineup is going to attract customers, new customers, and also bring old ones back. And I think that that's really important. And then the last thing I'll say is putting a face to the name. And this really comes with events. So in-person events are huge. This would be something like a farmer's market or a local event that you can show up to. Meeting new people, right? Shaking hands, pressing palms. Meeting new people is so big to business. And this goes back to the first point. Your circle of influence is the first group of people you target because it's easy to sell to them. And I say easy to sell, not saying like, oh, you got him, you sold to him, but just selling to them in the sense that it's easy to say, hey, I just launched this this company. We roast specialty coffee and I, you know, I would really love, I know that you're coffee drinker. It'd be great if, if you tried some of my coffee, right? That's a sale. That person's gonna go, sure, yeah. I mean, I would be happy to try your coffee. Well, if you can meet more people and make more friends, you have more of those people in your sphere of influence that are easy easy to sell to. So it's super important that you're not just a company and, and like surface level, you're a company, but that you show people the, pe the people behind the company and what's actually going on and who you are. Uh, selling the story is way more beneficial than just selling the product or service. And that's something that we really, really try to focus on uh, because it resonates with people a lot more than just uh, hey, buy our coffee. So this was a great question. It's a great topic. It's one I feel like I could really expand on more. So for anybody who has more questions, feel free to reach out. You guys know where to reach out to me, Instagram, email, YouTube, comment. Uh, I'll get back to you one way or the other. Uh, some people I've connected on the phone and that's awesome to get to actually just talk back and forth with somebody. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned something, picked up some tips or tricks for your own company if you're getting started out or if you're just working on customer retention, trying to retain those customers as you grow your customer base. So hopefully you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next video.